The International System of Units, abbreviated SI from French, is the modern form of metric system. It is the world's most widely used and oldest system of management both in everyday commerce and in science. Hello to all at home. Thank you for watching ITTV. Do you still remember the scientific investigation? What is a hypothesis? This was obviously our previous lesson. So let's begin a new lesson today. What is it? Physical quantities and their units. What is a physical quantity? It's actually a quantity that can be measured. Let's see further about the physical quantities. This is an example of the physical quantity, which is length. So what do you use to measure length? A ruler, of course. Next, the physical quantity is mass. You would see further in the lesson of the units or the tools that they use to measure mass. Next physical quantity is time. So remember, it was length, mass and next time. Here in this picture, they show you a stopwatch. You can use a stopwatch to measure time. Let's see the next physical quantity. It is temperature. We use thermometers to measure temperature. These are examples of different thermometers in the graphic. And lastly is electric current. This is also a physical quantity. You would see further in the lesson of the instrument used to measure electric current. So let's recall the physical quantities are electric current, length, mass and so on. So what is actually the SI unit? Physical quantities are important in scientific investigation but also in our daily life, especially in buying and selling. So, how would you go to a shop and buy cloth? You would ask them, I need a meter of cloth. They would use a ruler to actually measure the amount that you need. Or let's say you're buying rice. You would go to the shopkeeper and tell him, I need one kilogram of rice or one kg of fish and so on. So this is how the physical quantities are useful in your daily life for buying and selling. It is the French abbreviation which means International System of Units. And this is actually what we call SI unit. They are used as standard units all over the world. So why do we actually need a standard unit? So that when you actually use the length as meter here in Malaysia, it would be exactly the same when you travel overseas to Australia or UK, they would also use meters. So this is why they need standard units so that everyone around the world would recognize a certain measurement or the tools used for SI unit. So let's have a look further about the measurement and the tools used for the SI unit. Firstly, the physical quantity is length. Now you can see in the graphic the symbol used for length, it is actually L. The SI unit is meter. The symbol for meter is M. And what is the tool used to measure? Obviously a meter ruler. Let me show you a meter ruler. Now this is actually a ruler. So here we have got the measurements in centimeter and right here in inches. Usually a meter ruler that you can find in the cloth shop would actually be longer. So this is the ruler. Let's have a look at the next physical quantity. It is mass. Now the symbol for mass is actually M. So how do you actually measure mass? You use the SI unit kilogram which is kg. So what is the tool used? A lever or beam balance. So let's go further to learn about the next physical quantity. Next, we learn about time. So, the symbol for time is actually a small t. So, what is the SI unit used for time? It is seconds. It comes in a small s. So, what is the measuring instrument that you use for measuring time? Obviously, a stopwatch here. You can also use your wristwatch or digital clock or anything else to measure time. So let's recall once again, what do we learn in the beginning? 
length the SI unit is meter and the tool used is meter ruler. Mass the SI unit is kilogram and the measuring tool is actually a lever or beam balance. They obviously call it a balance. Next is time and the SI unit is seconds and we use a stopwatch. Let's see further. The physical quantity is temperature. Now, we have a capital T to symbolize temperature. What is the SI unit for temperature? It is Kelvin and it comes in a big K. So, what do you use to measure temperature? A thermometer. A thermometer. Uh, the graphic here actually shows you an example of the thermometer. In the thermometer, we can find mercury. So, it actually can measure your body temperature. The last physical quantity is electric current. Now, this is the symbol used to symbolize the electric current. So, what is the SI unit for electric current? It is ampere and it comes with a large A. So, what tool can you use to measure ampere or electrical current? It is an ammeter. The graphic here shows you an example of the ammeter. So, let's recall again. What are the SI units once again? It is Kelvin for temperature. Then we have got kilogram for mass, for length we have meter, then for electric current we have ampere and kilogram for mass. These are the SI units. So now you know the SI units, but how do you actually use them in writing measurements? Let's have a look at the correct way and the wrong way of writing measurements using SI unit. Each measurement made must be written with a symbol so that its value is more meaningful. Let's say you measure a book or you measure the length of your father's car or you actually measure the mass of the sugar in your house. Now how do you actually tell that it's kilogram, it is mass or it is length in meter? You put symbols. You learned the symbols earlier. Let's see the right and the wrong way of writing them. The wrong way is the length of the glass table is 4.2. Now you can ask me 4.2 what? Is it kilograms? Is it meter? Is it Kelvin for temperature or what? Obviously you have to put a symbol. Let's see the right way. The length of the glass table is 4.2 meters. Now you can imagine and see what is the actual length of the glass table. Let's have a look at the next example. The symbol used must be written in lower case except the symbol of temperature Kelvin K and electric current A ampere. So all the other symbol used must be written in small capital. Let's see the example. Now how do you write correctly the mass of the gold block? Let's see the wrong way first. The mass of the gold block is 10 kilograms, 10 kg. So you can see here that they have capitalized K and G, which is actually the symbol for SI unit kilogram. So what is the right way of writing them? The mass of the gold block is 10 kilogram with small capital K and G. This is the correct way of using the SI unit. So remember firstly to put in the SI unit and then to write the SI unit correctly by using small capital for everything else except for Kelvin and Ampere. So this was about the SI unit. What do you actually understand about prefix? What is a prefix? Let's see further. A prefix is added to a unit to change the value of the unit. Values of quantities are sometimes very big or very small. These values can be written with using prefix or standard units. Now prefix, what is it actually? Okay, let's say Let's take 1 million, the figure 1 million for an instant. Isn't it too long to be written? So you can actually shorten and write it down by using prefix. Don't understand what I mean? Let's see the following slides to learn prefix. What are they actually? Now, prefix actually come in two different types. Firstly, you can write the big quantities or small quantities. Let's firstly see the big quantities. It is tera, giga, mega, kilo, hexa and deca which are used for big quantities. So when we say tera, giga, mega, kilo, hexa and deca, they actually means large quantities. So what are the smaller quantities? Deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, 
pico and femto are used for small quantities so you must be able to recognize what are big quantities and what are small quantities when these prefixes are actually used you must be able to know the value of this prefix exactly let's have a look further regarding all these names symbols and values of prefixes the first prefix is tera and the symbol is t this is the value of thera. So how do you actually write them? As you can see, it is so long. So you can actually use multiplying factors, which are 10 to the power of 12. So when you write thera, you write 1 times with 10 to the power of 12. Let's see further. Giga, the symbol is G, and this is the value of giga. And how do you use multiplying factor here is 10 to the power of 9. So remember, Terra is 10 to the power of 12 and Giga is 10 to the power of 9. Next is Mega and the symbol is M and this is the value. So how do you actually write Mega when it comes to shortening a quantity? 10 to the power of 6. So please remember the multiplying factors as this is what you would write further. The next prefix is Kilo. The symbol for Kilo is K. So what is the value of kilo? 1000. The multiplying factor is 10 to the power of 3. Now, if you know the amount of zeros, like in 1000 we have got 3, then you know what's the multiplying factor. If it's 3 zeros, then it is 10 to the power of 3. Let's see next. The prefix is hecto and the symbol is H. What about the value? The value is 100. The multiplying factor is what students think first? Yes, it is 10 to the power of 2 because we have got two zeros. Next is DECA. The symbol is DA. -da. The value is 10 and the multiplying factor is 10 to the power of 1 because there's only one zero. Let's see further about the prefixes. The next prefix is DECI. Now, let's remember once again, DECI is all smaller units. What's the symbol for DECI? It's D and the value is 0 0.1. The multiplying factor is 10 to the power of negative 1. Next, we have centi and the symbol is C. The value for centi is 0 0.01 and the multiplying factor is 10 to the power of negative 2. After deci comes milli. The symbol is M. The value is 0 0.001 and the multiplying factor is... 10 to the power of negative 3. This also depends on the amount of 0 but after the point. So if we have got 2 0 after 0 0.001 then it's 10 to the power of negative 3. The next prefix is micro and this is the symbol for micro. The value is this and the multiplying factor is 10 to the power of negative 6. Following micro is nano with the symbol n. This is the value and the multiplying factor is 10 to the power of 9. Next, we have pico and the symbol is P. The value is this and the multiplying factor is 10 to the power of 12. And lastly, we have femto. The symbol of femto is obviously F and this is the large value of femto and the multiplying factor is 10 to the power of negative 50. These are all small values. So how do you actually use the prefixes? 4000 watts. So it is equivalent to 4 mega watts. 0 0.000006 second is 6 microsecond. And lastly, 0 0.002 gram is 2 milligrams. This is how you use prefixes. See how short the value is written? So what is standard form? Standard units are numerical representations in multiplier factors. In the standard form, a quantity is written as a times 10 to the power of n, where a is more equal to 1 or lesser than 10 and n is an integer. So this is standard unit. How do you actually use the standard form? Let's have a look at the following table. We have got three different columns, one with value of physical quantity, next with normal form and lastly with standard form. Let's have a look. 
the value of physical quantity is actually 4000. The normal form is 4 times 1000 and the standard form is 4 times 10 to the power of 3. Let's see the next one. 2 million, the normal form is 2 times 1 million and the standard form is 2 to the power of 10 to 6. Next example is 0 0.005, the normal form is 5 times 0 0.001 and what's the standard form? is 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. This is a smaller value compared to the top two ones. Let's see the last one. 0 0.000007 and the normal form is 7 times 0 0.000001 and the standard form is 7 times 10 to the power of negative 6. So this was about standard form and prefixes. Let's move over to the exam lab of the day to try something regarding the prefix and standard form. Question 1. Which of the following are not examples of physical quantities? A. Length B. Temperature C. Mass and D. Height So I'm sure you can remember all the five physical quantities correctly. So I'm sure you could answer this question correctly. The answer is... D. Height. Length, temperature and mass are physical quantities. Height is not a physical quantity. Let's see question 2. What is the SI unit for electric current? Which is the instrument used to measure it? Electric current is a physical quantity. What is the instrument used? Let's see the correct answer. The answer is ampere and a large A is a symbol for ampere and the instrument used is actually an ammeter. Earlier in the lesson, you saw how an ammeter looked like. Question 3. The following are examples of small quantities except A. Deci, B. Nano, C. Mega and D. Pico. So Deci, Nano, Mega and Pico. Which one of them is a large quantity? Let's see the correct answer. It is C, mega. Mega is what? It's actually 10 to the power of 6. Question 4. Write each of the following value in prefix form. A, 0 0.003 meter. B, 7000 grams. And C, 1 million Kelvin. The answer is A, 3 millimeter. B, 7 kilogram. And C, 1 mega Kelvin. So this is how you actually use prefixes. So you have come to the end of the exam lab. I hope that you could answer everything correctly. Let's quickly do a summary of today's lesson. Physical quantity, length and mass. Other types of physical quantity is time and temperature. The last physical quantity is electric current. So remember all the five main physical quantities. A prefix is added to a unit to change the value of the unit. Values of quantities are sometimes very big or very small. These values can be written with using prefix or standard units. Prefix come in two different forms. A is tera, giga, mega, kilo, hecto, and deca are used for big quantities. Deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, pico, and femto are used for small quantities. Remember all these big quantities and small quantities. So this is regarding today's lessons, which is about physical quantities and their units. Remember all the prefixes and how to use standard form. That's all for today, students. I would see you again in the chapter of Introductory to Science in a new lesson the next time. Till then, thank you for watching ITTV. Take care and bye.